Blessings, my brethren. I am with you yet another day to share with you from God's word. I am somewhat shocked as I thought of these devotions that I'm sharing with you and how important it is to share them with you. I went back on the line and I began to check and see how we are doing in regards to men that God call, how we are doing with them in ministry today. And I am amazed to find out that really over 1,000, some say 1,500, some say 1,700 men all around the world leave the ministry per month. Lord have mercy upon us. Why men are leaving ministry like this? Some are burned out. When you go and you visit some churches, there are churches without pastors. And the question is asked, is God still calling men? And my answer is yes. God will always be calling men. Then something is wrong if God is calling men and the churches are without pastors and the men that are pastoring are getting so discouraged and born out and just leaving the ministry. What is wrong? We need to stop and pay attention to this. So I'm doing these devotions to encourage my fellow colleagues to just keep on going for the Lord. Don't give up. Keep on going for the Lord. Daniel Whitley, in his song, The Banner of the Cross, he said, there's a royal banner given for display to the soldiers of the king. And you know, those of us that are in ministry, we are his soldiers. He said, as an ensign fair, we lift it up today, while as ransomed ones we sing, marching on, marching on, for Christ count everything but loss, and to crown him king, toil and sing, neat the banner of the cross. Oh, my dear brethren, those of you who are called by God to preach, those of you who are chosen by God, I encourage you to keep on going for the Lord. We are looking at this portion of Scripture in Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 to 22, when Jesus called his first disciples. I close last morning by reading for you the portion of Scripture from John chapter 1, verse 35, down to verse number 51. I begin with John chapter 2, verse number 11. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Canaan of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. These two men that we are speaking about in the morning, he also called to the ministry of evangelism to walk along with him. Notice their response when he called them. In chapter 4 and verse 22 of Matthew, and they immediately left the ship and their father, and they followed him. They left their father, the boat, the nets, and everything else. Notice this about these men. They were ordinary men. May I say, very little education little spiritual perception, if any, very little religious training they had, if any. Many times, while Jesus was training them, they did not understand, but they would ask him in private what he meant when he spoke in parables. These men were very self-centered and inhospitable. When the followers became hungry, the disciples thought of sending them away on their own to find food. Matthew 14, 15. And when it was even, 
his disciples came to him saying, this is a desert place. The time is now past. Send the multitude away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. When the little children were brought to Jesus for him to bless them, they rebuked those that brought them. Yes, his disciples. In chapter 19 of Matthew and in verse number 13, were they brought unto him little children that he should put his hands on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked them. Notice Peter thought it was very generous of him to forgive seven times. Matthew 18, 21, then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often shall thy brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven times? The night of Jesus' betrayal, many of them went to sleep. What I am trying to say is that from the outward appearance, these men would not qualify to be Jesus' disciples. In Matthew 26, verse 40 to 45, And he cometh unto the disciples and find them asleep, and said unto Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh my father, if this cup may not pass away from me except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and he found him asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to the disciples and said unto them, Sleep on now, take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. These men had their problems. There was nothing special in them as to call them. But he chose them to be his co-workers. I believe that these men were the roughest of the bunch, these four fishermen. Jesus did not choose one of the Jewish religious leaders, just ordinary men who believed in him. Jesus did not command his disciples to become fishermen. He said, I will make you fishers of men. Nonetheless, to become fishers of men, you must get up and follow me. There are some things I have learned to become a good fisherman. I have done fishing in my life in the past, and I've learned that fishermen must prepare before they fish. And that is true for fishing for fish. It is also true for fishing for men. The man of God must prepare oh, to deliver the message of God before he gets before the people of God. And when I say prepare, I mean properly prepare. There is no excuse for a man of God such the night hustling to find something to preach Sunday morning or Friday night hustling to find something to preach Saturday morning. There's no reason for that. If God called us, if God called you to preach his word, then we must prepare to preach the word of God. So fishermen must prepare before they go to fish. Fishermen must learn to be patient. Fishermen must learn to wait. Sometimes we want everything happen now, but that's not the way it happens. Everybody would love to have a big church, but big church comes with hard work. Fishermen must be persistent and have perseverance. A fisherman can't just sit around and hope for fish to show up, to catch. One must be willing to go from one place to the next. Nothing catching here, then move on. You know, sometimes I go fishing myself. I have ended up three or four different places, driving to and jumping overboard and, and making sure that there are fish there. If nothing there, I get back 
uh, out of the water up on the rocks and get in my vehicle and drive somewhere else. Why? Because I'm not in the water just to get wet. I'm in the water to catch fish. And it's so it is with catching men. Sometimes this may not be the place and God will move us to some place else and we must be willing to move. This is exciting to me, but my time is up and I'll be back next morning to share a little more with you and tell you that fishermen must expect that there will be rough days. Lord, thank you so much. Thank you for the fishermen that you have called. And God, you have allowed me to be a fisher of men. And I pray, dear God, that I would read your word and follow you. And God, that men will come to know you as Savior. The same I pray for me, I pray for my colleagues, wherever they are, men that are preaching the word. Be with each and every one, dear Father. The men that you have called, the men that you are calling, may they respond, dear Lord, in the positive. Thank you. Thank you. And may you bless each and every listener. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. My friends and loved ones, share this devotion with someone. You can never tell who God is calling. Have a great day.